And no matter how remote every investor is concerned about the possibility of a massive economic disaster, it has occurred previously. It may happen again, but years of hard-earned savings and retirement funds might be wiped away in us if this happens. Fortunately, you can protect most of your assets from a market catastrophe or worldwide economic crisis. An excellent defensive plan includes preparation and diversification. They can work together to help you withstand a financial storm. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. Welcome back. The House of Representatives has alleged that the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami S.A.N., was in receipt of funds accrued from the sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil in a China deal without remitting same to the Federation account. Chairman, House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee, investigating the alleged loss of over $2.4 billion in revenue from the illegal sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil export in 2015, including all crude oil export and sales by Nigeria from 2014 till date. Honorable Mark Bila gave the hint while addressing invitees at a public hearing of the panel. Let's take details of that report now. The other committee was set up on December 2022 after a motion brought before the House by Honorable Ibrahim Ishaka on the need to investigate the serious loss recorded by the country in crude oil sale amounting to billions of dollars. The Speaker, Femi Bajabiamila, who was represented by Honorable Ishaka in his welcome address, stated that Sections 88 and 89, including the House rule, gave the House power to set up an other committee to investigate the alleged crude oil theft. This was buttressed by the Chairman of the other committee, Honorable Mike Igbila, who assured the invited organizations that the aim of the investigation is not to witch hunt, but rather to address corruption. In the light of the dwindling revenue accruing to the Nigeria from crude oil sales, it was quite alarming to learn about the whistleblower's allegations that over 2.4 billion US dollars in possible revenue by the country was allegedly lost from the sale of 48 million barrels of Nigeria's crude oil cargoes in China. While we will not allow Nigeria's commonwealth to be stolen and frittered away, we will also have to uphold the very tenets of human rights and the rule of law to say that Everybody deserves a right, a fair hearing. In his submission, a former lawmaker representing Ikpoba Oka Federal Constituency in 8th Legislative Assembly blamed the huge oil theft on the activities of cabals in the country who are determined to detail the will of progress in Nigeria. Through critical NFC data and the central bank, pre-shipment inspection report shows an undeclared crude oil shortfall of 57 million 830 thousand of Nigeria crude oil translated to well over 17 billion dollars to the United States of America. Also, over 3 billion dollars to China and 839,522,600,000 to Norway. Oriental Energy and the Nigeria Intelligence Agency were present but could not make submissions but were however given one week to make a presentation. While the NNPC, CBN, AGF, Upstream Regulatory Commission, Ministry of Finance, Account General Office and others all shunned first day of the hearing as the committee adjourned to next week.
Uh, straight now to the business of the day. Whatever your approach to risk, it is generally considered wise to ensure you're not relying on one type of investment for returns within your portfolio. By diversifying or spreading your investment across different sectors and asset classes, you could reduce volatility. Well, this is just one tip, many more to expect. Now, Michael Obiaju Esquire is a Nigerian legal practitioner, property consultant, and real estate broker and analyst. He is a graduate of the premium and prestigious University of Nigeria, Enugu Campus, where he studied law and graduated with an LLB and BL from the prestigious Nigerian Law School, Lagos Campus. As a renowned lawyer, Michael has had his field of litigation and legal practice. He has also gained stride by excelling to be head of legal and compliance at Panic Nigeria Limited. He has played lots of advisory and representative roles for PINIC in the real estate industry and is not yet done with his assignment. Many thanks for joining us, Michael, on Business Insight on PLOS TV Africa. You're welcome. All right, let's just talk about uh, the business of the day. We're talking about safeguarding your return on investment and um, you know what you need to do. I give a tip that one needs to diversify uh, his um, assets so that way your risk wouldn't be so concentrated. Why is that necessary? Oh, well, uh, all boils down to, I mean, we're, we're in a, in a, in a risk-based investment sector. I mean, operating in Nigeria, speaking with, with the spell of Nigeria in mind, you know, where a lot of things poses risk to our investment, ranging from insecurity to government policies and, and otherwise. Even financial and economic um, dynamism also creates um, risk for business investors. So with bearing that in mind, there's always the need to, just as you pointed out, to diversify. I mean, diversification you know, works in, in two respects. Either you, you diversify your investment within the same sets of assets. For instance, pick real estate, for instance, because I mean, that's why I function mm. majorly. Picking real estate as an instance, I mean, you could diversify your investment by investing in various locations of the country. Of course, we have Lagos being the hub of real estate in Nigeria at the moment. You could spread your investment to Abuja, to Port Harcourt, to the eastern parts of Nigeria and the likes. You know, you could also, another arm of diversification could be throwing your investment across the different investment portfolios. I mean, while you, you, you put your investment in real estate, you could also spread to stocks, you could spread to mutual funds, crypto, just as, uh, and a lot more of, you know, other opportunities that present itself. And the reason for this being that the um, investment performance of one of your, or your assets doesn't get to affect mm. the totality of all that you've invested so far. So that, that provides the need to, to diversify. Okay, let me just um, take you back to what you just said about uh, how to diversify. You talked about in terms of uh, location and of course across some various um, portfolios. Uh, you uh, mentioned real estate as an instance and you said uh, you could uh, decide to invest in Abuja and also invest in uh, maybe Lagos or any other state um, across the country. So invariably you're saying that if one were to invest in real estate, uh, the, the policy that may affect uh, uh, the business in Lagos might not be the same across some other state or what? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm very frank with that. I mean, Lagos is a very dynamic place to invest. Mm. Uh, it's taking you back to real estate, you know. Um, you see that, you know, if you invest in Lagos State, um, the government policies, the state government policy, you know, how real estate, again, properties are, are registered and the, the bureaucracy around it can be a bottleneck to putting all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. So there comes, comes the need to diversify, to extend your, your tentacles to places like Abuja, yeah. who have a very fair and soft landing with respect to how you register your properties. The dynamism of Lagos is also entirely different. Cost of if you're in construction, cost of constructing in, in, in certain places in Lagos is relatively higher mm -hmm. than so many other places. In So, I mean, these are all tied down to the various state economic behaviors per, per state, per location, gov government policies per state, per location, mm. and the rest. And then, you know, you look at certain places like the, the far north, Bono. Um, if you want to invest in Bono, for instance, the insecurity challenges that that area portrays would probably be a, a bottleneck as to why you could throw so much mm. investment there. So then again, each location is mm. given various playing grounds for investment. Also, you also talked about um, diversifying in terms of um, portfolios, uh, which uh, brings um, to question that of um, broadening one's approach to 
investment financing. So what factors would you still consider if you were looking at uh, broadening your approach in terms of um, portfolios? Uh, will you be looking at your wherewithal or uh, just um, the knowledge you have about um, securities or those and platforms you want to play? What really works in that instance? Okay, well, I'll, I'll start from what I call the foundation for mm -hmm. everybody who wants to invest generally. Um, so it comes from, first of all, the investor having a basic investor awareness, mm -hmm. investor, investment awareness, permit me um, to use that word, investment awareness, whereby, I mean, take for instance, you want to invest in stocks, you want to invest in real estate, it behooves of you to carry out a research on what this field portrays, what, what it entails to invest in this place. Bearing that in mind, you now go on to have your um, you know, risk analysis. That's what we call the risk appetite. That's what we call the risk tolerance. Mm -hmm. uh, are, you, are you able to tolerate so much risk in this field you're looking to invest in? Mm -hmm. What's your appetite for bearing risk? How much risk can you bear? And then after you do that, you, you now take up, up the factor of setting your ROI goals. Okay. I mean, I believe we are talking on return on investment. Mm -hmm. Setting your, your ROI goals, which I always advise that people make their ROI goals relatively attainable, something reasonable, something within reach and realistic as well. So when, when you look, you do that, you'll be able to know your, your risk threshold, mm. how far you're looking to gain you know, your return on investment in this particular investment, this particular location. And then one needs to now take the next step of conducting a very proper due diligence mm. in investing. I mean, you cannot invest without in properties right now in Lagos and, and everywhere in the country or even in the world at large without carrying a proper due diligence on the company you're purchasing from, um, the, the, the title of the property, the authenticity of the property you know, in question, and relatively crypto, stock exchange, whatever it is. Mm. There's always that need to conduct the uh, mm. uh, to confirm if um, the agency is rated with the regulatory, right regulatory bodies and all. After that, you know, you know, get a professional. There's always the need to engage an expert. Mm in investment. Take for instance, you want to invest in, I'll still always come back to real estate because yeah. permits me, that's my threshold, you yeah. know, I'm my, my forte. So investing in, in real estate, um, is, is, is there's a thing, it goes by without the saying that you cannot invest in properties in Nigeria today without engaging the services of a lawyer. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm a lawyer, so I've, I've offered services to people in that regard a whole lot. A, a lawyer helps for that carry out that due diligence. So it costs across every other dimension of life where you want to invest in. You always need the, the services of an expert, okay. someone who's traded on that ground before. And then there's the need to always constantly evaluate and carry out an audit on your investment. Where were you when you invested? What was the situation of things now? Have things appreciated? Your ROI goals, you know, we talked about that before. Yeah, I was and even going to take you back. We just, mm -hmm. uh, before you even get to continue, you talked about setting ROI goals uh, uh, that are attainable. You know, what makes your uh, ROI goals attainable? Uh, for instance, uh, if uh, you really don't have much and uh, you just want to um, start off with something small, maybe you have like um, five million now, you want to talk. So what kind of... Um, Returns should you be expecting that would be very very attainable per se? I mean, um, <laughs> basically every investor, um, as far as uh, we all know, always wants to get as much ROI mm. as possible. There's that hunger wherever investment you want to go into. Everybody, every investor aims for as much ROI as they can get. But then, I mean, it's good to be realistic. You know, is there a rule of thumb? Um, or some oh um, no, no, basically just look at the environmental factors. It still okay. boils down to environmental factors. Take for instance, then again, um, okay, take for instance crypto. Yeah. You know, you're investing in cryptocurrency, which is you know a, a very open market where many Nigerians are beginning to exploit lately. Investing in cryptocurrencies, what what does the environment say about this? How high do you think you can get? Yeah. There's no point living in, in Wonderland by setting outrageous and exorbitant ROI goals mm. and then in the long run you're, you're disappointed because over time you're not able to get yeah. that. So it's good to be, to be realistic. You look at the environment, you know, in Lagos for instance, which is a, a real estate hub in, in Nigeria as we speak and Africa at large, the ROI in Lagos is relatively high. So there's what to expect. Mm. If you go far down certain places, you know, in the in the in the west and even in the east as well, mm. where ROI is relatively low, you go and invest there without looking at the environmental factors and you're aiming, you know, the the, the star, the, the the moon. Sorry, you mm. most likely get caught up in disappointment when you find yourself mm. not not attaining that high. 
All right, uh, that's very, very interesting. Uh, since we've talked about an environmental um, you know, factors, let's consider uh, the role uh, the legal um, framework might, uh, might come to play in all of this. Specifically, uh, if we're talking about investment, you're talking about uh, returns on them and all of that. Uh, how far would you say uh, regulation and uh, the, the, uh, the regulatory authorities and bodies have actually influenced, uh, maybe positively or negatively, investment drives in the country? Oh, well, a whole lot. So, so, so we live in um, a mixed economy whereby, as much as the capitalists have the orientation of how business to go, should go, the government also has its um, orientation of how business should go, and which always drives them to set up policies to aid businesses and all of that. You know, there are so many acts, the Company and Light Matters Act, you know, um, investment and Securities uh, yeah. Act, the NIPC, the National Investment Commission Act as well, and a good number of other laws in place that guide investment in Nigeria. So w what challenge Nigeria is currently facing, you know, with respect to these regulations are uh, the implementation of them. So we have the, the bodies, the agencies who are supposed to further implement these policies for the betterment of the people and the government has, I will permit me to use that word, failed mm. in, in implementing their policies. In that mm. way, it has adversely affected business. So Nigeria, as they always say, is a unique ground. Mm. It, it, it's, it's not an ideal society mm. to invest in, being that it's unique in its own way. So, I mean, policies are there. A lot of them are obnoxious. A lot of them needs to be amended. You know, I made mention of registering in, in Lagos. You, you need to go and register a property in Lagos State and see what it takes, how mm. rigorous and uh, costly it is. So it, needs, it, it calls for a need of flexibility. And the government says this, they should actually do implement it. Okay. Uh, so that the government has failed in implementation, which has really, really affected um, the framework of mm. investment in, in Nigeria. Yeah, let's, still tell which, well, let's still stay with uh, regulation. Specifically now, let's talk about documentation, which you have mentioned in passing in real estate uh, in terms of um, government uh, policies and all of that. Why is it that uh, there is such um, a bottleneck uh, or bottlenecks when it comes to uh, documentation for housing and real estate, specifically in a state like Lagos? Bureaucracy. Red tapping, that's really was just what it is. So um, I, I've had the privilege of, of traveling to a good number of places, you know, the United Arab Emirates as well as the UK. You find out that what it takes to register a property in these places are, I mean, as much as your, your legitimate purchase of this property, mm -hmm. I mean, fair, fair ground, very f seamless procedure of permit me to use that word. But in Nigeria and then in Lagos, the civil service, the bureaucracy, the file passage from one pe person to the other, and then, you know, is a huge clog in the wheel. Mm. I mean, just that whole bureaucratic system. I mean, the, we're, we're advancing. The, the government should be open to reforms, mm. reforms in, in, in technology. Technology has come to make things a lot easier. I mean, mm. if Africa is embracing technology, it should reflect in, in things like this. You know, so that bureaucracy and red tapism has really been a clog in the wheel while registering properties everywhere in Nigeria, but Lagos case, mm. Lagos, Lagos state is a bit unique in its own way. You know, it has really affected things in that regard. Yeah. Okay, since we're talking about, uh, you know, landed properties, uh, real estate uh, in Lagos, another thing just came to my mind that that is um, land grabbing, uh, which is um, a major issue in uh, uh, states like Lagos and maybe some other aspect. How can um, an investor, you know, genuinely protect himself so these issues will not really arise? Oh well, there's only how far an, an investor can go. Like you pointed out, um, land grabbing is, is a major challenge. Mm -hmm. and mainly in, in Lagos, Portacot has, has a share of that cake as well, but relatively in Lagos. So the government has really tried. Uh, for starters, there's a land grabbers, you know, law in, in, in Lagos. There's a land, uh, land grabbers protection law. Mm -hmm. There's also a, la a court in, in Atikeja that attend to cases specifically mm -hmm. relating to, to land grabbing as well. But for an investor, how far can you go? Mm. It all boils down to due diligence. I mentioned that in the first place. If you conduct your due diligence, I don't think you, you'll be making any much mistakes. Mm. I mean, there, there's, the, there's the surface search, which you can do to see what's basically on the surface. And then there's the deep search as mm. well, which you know, most lawyers offer services in that regard to, to unearth on, on every detail of a property. Yeah. So if you play safe, 
and by um, investing, uh, carrying out your due diligence, proper due diligence with the help of a professional, you'll be able to identify, you know, loopholes, lacunas, areas where, you know, you really do not have to tread in, mm. and then you withdraw. But with the proper due diligence, people have bought properties without land grabbing issues. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure you're aware. And that's because they did proper due diligence. So it all boils down to that due diligence with the help of a, of a professional. Yeah. All right. It is still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Michael Obiaju, legal practitioner, is my guest. He is at the head of legal and compliance at Panic Limited. And we've been looking at... Uh, wealth creation, how you can actually protect your return on investment. We'll take a quick break. There is more to expect when we return to join us again. All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We are looking at uh, wealth creation and uh, my guest, uh, Michael Obiajo, is still with us. Uh, we've talked about land grabbing, you know, just before we went on that break. Uh, you know, uh, let's still talk about uh, you know, investment per se. Most people believe that uh, you really might need so much that if you don't have so much, uh, you can't really go into some sort of investment. How true or how false is that? And how can you begin to enlighten Nigerians on that? Oh, well, uh, that, that should be a, an outdated 1900 <laughs> um, theory that, okay. you know, uh, there's only how much you need to invest. I mean, with the awareness created in, in investments um, currently, I mean, in, in the world and even in Nigeria, there's there's a saying I'm used to, you know, in my early years of, of practicing in, in law and as well as real estate. Real estate. For every investment, for, for every investor, there is an investment. And for mm. every investment, there is an investor. Mm. So it's all about information. How accessible are you to information to know that with my little tuner somewhere, it can fetch me so so and so investment. Yeah. So yet again, information, access to information, due diligence, proper due diligence, and, and all of that. So I mean, I'm with little, you know, people invest. I, like I'm, I'm, my fault is, is real estate. So I mean, if you check very well. Um, all over, you know, in the, in the property sector, there are people who have advised, uh, who have advertised properties of for low income earners. Mm. You know, there are so many advantages. You know, like the government, you know, creating, uh, creating mortgage for low income earners to be able to access houses and properties for themselves. Recently, people could uh, assess a part of their their pensions to also, uh, you mm -hmm. know, get property. So these are uh, information that has been put out in in the public space that people can harness and get their, their investment with as little as they have. So you don't need to have so much mm. to, to invest. Okay, there's still a gray area. You know, I'm glad you mentioned the issue of um, pension fund um, administration because some people believe it's just uh, uh, lots of uh, money just uh, lying idly. You know, and of course there is uh, this talk of, uh, you know, with your pension, you can actually mortgage it to get a house. But how, how far have we really gone with that since... Uh, uh, this talk started, and um, how feasible is it really? Oh, it's, it's very feasible. It's very, very feasible. They are, they, um, it started recently, to, at the first tail end of 20 year, 2022 or mm -hmm. thereabouts, and I know a good number of people who, who, who have assessed with, with, through this, this medium. Mm -hmm. So the banks are, are willing to help. Of course, the CBN has disbursed funds enough to, to, to back up this, this mortgage you know, schemes. So and the mortgage banks are also there willing to help. So it's it's feasible. There are people who have mm -hmm. uh, exploited it, and I know a good number of people who have taken advantage of this and been able to to, to get that percentage for their income. Of mm -hmm. course, there's the NHF scheme as mm -hmm. well, where the government gives you about 15 million naira with a single digit mm -hmm. um, interest rate. Interest rate. Yeah, yeah. and that's the normal you know mortgage scheme okay. in general. So. Yes, and then most real estate companies as well, even, even where I am, offer the payment plan okay. where people can um, purchase properties mm. by paying in piecemeal, very flexible payment okay. plan as well. So these are avenues whereby with your you know, trickling income, you can still you can get, something get something to invest. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, still talking about protecting investment and getting um, good yields um, at the end of the day because it will not really be wise uh, after you know working and uh, you're putting out some amount of it in savings and uh, you want to invest uh, at the end of the day uh, you you meet some sort of um, unscrupulous uh, you know uh, developers why i said that because um sometime in uh, some four or five years ago there was like a proliferation of uh, uh 
developers are asking people to come invest in real estate, come invest in landed properties, or even outright buying of houses. At the end of the day, most people were complaining that uh, they didn't really get uh, maybe the right papers. At the end of the day, there were some commotion, and um, the developers, uh, you know, ran away. And uh, at the end of the day, the investments uh, were not protected as it is. So, how do you protect yourself? How can you be sure that you're actually dealing with uh, a genuine uh, developer? Oh well. So, I mean, for every question, there's an answer. So, from the end of, uh, angle of the government, the government has seen these mm -hmm. um, flaws in the real estate market. The real estate market. Um, is experiencing a boom. There is a proliferation of real estate companies who are professionally doing the same thing. Mm. But of, obviously, in between them, there's the genuine and there's the mm. ingenuine. So the government has come up with regulatory bodies that guide and oversee the activities of these okay. real estate companies. So at the national level, you have the Redan, okay. you know, which operates for Babuja, and for the Lagos level, you are, which I know of Lagos so well, they, they've been very, very proactive in that. They have the Las Rera. Mm. So the Las Rera is, is a regulatory body that, ha that called on real estate uh, players and uh, developers and says, come and register with us. And, you know, this sets the rules, the mm -hmm. boundaries, the guidelines that guides how real estate practice should go. I'm, I'm speaking specifically to Lagos. And then if you as an investor wants to invest in a real estate company, you, you first of all check, do your due diligence check if this company is registered with these mm -hmm. regulatory bodies. Why? Because of course, if the um, real estate you know, a company decides to go awry, you have a body to report to that can pretty much sanction mm -hmm. them. You know, and then, you know, like I mentioned earlier, nothing beats that due diligence. Mm -hmm. you know, it still boils down to you. You, mm -hmm. you owe yourself that right to conduct a due diligence on whatever property or real estate company you tend to, to deal with. All right. So as we round off now, I just want you to give your final advice. Uh, just uh, look straight to the camera and just uh, advise um, someone uh, who actually has had it tough in investment and uh, they've not really gotten all the returns that they expected, maybe because they've uh, fallen uh, prey to unscrupulous, uh, you know, people who came with them, all sorts of, um, you know, bogus uh, investment plans. And what would you say to them as a way of um, rounding off and them going forward? I mean, um, experience, as they say, is the best teacher. Uh, I'm pretty much sure um, a lot of people have had their, their fingers burnt in, in by investing with the wrong set of people. Um, there's still hope out there. There are still real estate companies out there who are genuine and doing what is right. So, you know, both if you've been on the show, uh, it boils down to a few things I, I've mentioned before. Firstly, you have to be aware of the, the industry you're looking to invest in. You also have to conduct a survey analysis on, on the risk kind of risk you're willing to take and nothing beats due diligence and getting a professional to assist you in having this due diligence and you know look before you leap that that's what i'll say is is the perfect advice for everybody looking to invest and hopefully you, you make the right choice this time well thank you so much and michael we do appreciate your you're time welcome. on the show all right, I'm sure you have actually uh, gotten several insights on how you can actually create wealth for yourself and, of course, uh, you know, protect um, your investment and get um, high returns, uh, which are actually your expectations. Uh, my guest has been uh, Michael Obiadri, he's the head of uh, Legal and Compliance of um, Panic Nigeria Limited. And that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Akadonye. See you again next time. Bye for now. <laughs>